Uh, I thought they, they looked energized and uh, they, they came back uh, w w with uh, uh, effort, uh, good attitude. And, and you know, really, it's a good question, Rich, because you know, right now, uh, there's no question that Iowa has the momentum because uh, they had a fantastic win over a very tough Michigan State team in double overtime. And uh, you know, our, our team needs to understand that that it's one thing to have a bye week, but it's uh, it's a whole other thing to be playing a team like Iowa, and, and we've got to try to go out here and practice and be precise and practice hard with great effort every day and, and try to equal out that momentum. And uh, I thought yesterday was a decent start. Bob Flatters in Harrisburg. Bob, uh, yeah, so I was wondering, could you evaluate the play of your corner for the big piece? Uh, this is the beginning of the season. I remember you had some depth concerns there early. And teams in early in the season that made some plays on you guys on third down down the middle of the field. Could you just talk about the, the play of the corner for safety for that? I, w I would say that the corners and safeties fall into the, uh, the, the category of the whole team, meaning there's been improvement throughout the season. Uh, I, I believe there's been improvement in, in understanding of the schemes and uh, understanding of uh, zone coverage and pattern reads and, and then doing a better job with their man coverage techniques. And uh, I still think there's a lot of room for improvement, as there is with our whole football team and, and starting with me, with the coaching staff. You know, we, we can look to do things better every single day. So, uh, but, I, but I think the corners and safeties have, uh, have improved on a week-to-week -week basis, and hopefully that, that can continue. Derek Labars from Wilkesbury. Yeah, Bill, uh, how close are you with uh, Brian Ferentz? Is there anything you have to change up this week for the game because he's on the other sideline? Uh, well, I'm, you know, I'm close with Brian. He's, uh, you know, anytime you work uh, work with someone 24-7, uh, uh, six, six months out of the year uh, for four years, and, you, you know, you go to a Super Bowl with a guy and uh, uh, you have a lot of respect for his football knowledge and, and all those things, yeah, there's no, no question that uh, it's a great friendship there. Uh, and obviously have a lot of respect for his dad and, and what he's done at University of Iowa. You know, as far as changing things up, uh, we're, we're just going to, um, you know, stick with our game plan and, and you know, take what Iowa gives us defensively. It's a very, very tough defense and just try to do, do the best we can. Mark Wilkenrich in Allentown. So, recent history for Penn State has been difficult to play at Iowa. How do you approach places that are difficult to play at on the road? I think you're asking about the difficulty of playing at Iowa? Right, and how do you approach places that are difficult to play? Well, it is. It's a very difficult place to play, uh, as are most of the places in the Big Ten. You, you know, it's going to be an electric atmosphere. Uh, the crowd noise is, is definitely going to be a factor. So we've got to make sure that uh, we deal with that in the right way. So we've got to practice with crowd noise and, and make sure that our players do a great job of communicating offense, defense, special teams. But again, it's not going to be anything like what it's like on Saturday night. So hopefully we can just give them a, give them a picture of it. And, uh, and then when they get there Saturday night, they, they have a better understanding of how to deal with, with those things. But it, it's, it's a very tough environment. and. Uh, you know, they're playing well right now. It's a very tough football team, so it's uh, it's not going to be easy. Frank Bodani, New York. Hi, Coach. Um, how do you think the bye week may have helped uh, Bill Belton uh, physically? How did he look yesterday? And just having him at 100% for his versatility, what is that? how does that help you guys? Yeah, I think, I think it helped a lot of the guys that were, that were banged up. That's what bye weeks are for. And it's, you know, again, it's, it's pretty good when the bye week comes right in the middle of the season because you've had a long training camp and then six tough games and and that's good it's better to have it then than it is you know after the first game or something like that so I think uh, the bye week helped a lot of those guys Billy included and uh, you know yesterday Billy Billy uh, you know did some nice things in practice so uh, as did a, as did a lot of those guys that were banged up so uh, you know again we've got to have a really good practice week we're playing a very very tough football team on the road so Hopefully, our improvement can continue. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia. 
Yeah, hi, Bill. Uh, you commented last week about all the talk uh, nationally praising you and your team. Uh, did, did you talk to the players about not listening to the hype, and, and, and why or why not? Yeah, we, we don't. Um, we just try to focus on on the task at hand, Joe. You know, we, you know, you're four and two. You, you've done some decent things. We think we've improved as a football team. But like I said last week, this is the meat of the schedule, and uh, this is a very very tough schedule. Starting with uh, an excellent Iowa football team that plays a physical brand of football that our our players need to be ready for. No question about it. And. Uh, so we, we believe that the, the players, led by, again, a, a really good senior, strong senior class, that these guys are focused on, on the game this week. And we don't really listen to all that. I think it's, it's, it's nice, and we respect uh, the recognition and all that. But, but it's, uh, it's much more important to focus on, on the opponent. Mike Gross in Lancaster. Uh, hi, Bill. Last, after the uh, Northwestern game, you said you, you practice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and it kind of see where you are. I think that's what you said. And, and with that in mind, just how did you handle the bye week, uh, not only for the players, but for your, yourself and the coaches? What, what did you kind of use, use the time for last week? Sure. We practiced uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They were uh, shorter type practices, but intense practices. and. They, they were practices that involved uh, what we had learned in our offices about uh, in our meeting rooms, coaching-wise, about our self scout, trying to get better at some things and maybe trying to break some tendencies on some things we've been doing. I thought the players came out with really good effort in all three practices. We gave them, uh, obviously, a little extra time to uh, concentrate on their academics. Hopefully, they got caught up on classes that maybe they were a little bit behind on because of their football commitments. and. Uh, and then over the weekend, a lot of these guys were able to go home. For the coaching staff, I mean, again, you know, a lot of people ask me about, uh, you know, how was the, how was your bye week and having days off? Well, you know, you never have a day off during football season. It's either getting the team ready to play or recruiting or, um, you know, whatever it may be. I was able to, I think I took my wife out to dinner on Saturday night and had a nice dinner, but that was about, that was about it. We were all working and. Uh, and try to get ready for Iowa, do some self scout, and do some recruiting. So it's a pretty busy time for the coaching staff. Donnie Collins and Scranton. Hi, Bill. Did you see any changes with special teams during the practices last week? And, and are you confident the kicking game can be better in the second half than it was in the first? I, I have seen improvement, Donnie. Again, now we got to go do it in a game. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's important to see the improvement in practice. And we've seen the improvement in practice, uh, specifically with, uh, with Sam and, and Alex and, and then with our, with our snappers, whether it's Ty Howell or Mike Furman or, or Emery Eddard. These guys work hard. These are great kids. You know, these are great kids. And, you know, obviously they've been the focal point a little bit because, you know, we've struggled at times. But, uh, but again, I, I've seen improvement, and, and I have faith that they're going to be able to do it uh, in, in the games. Scott Brown, Pittsburgh. Yeah, hey Bill, some of your players have talked about uh, the ripping jazz they take. Um, I want to say to you before an upcoming game. And I just wonder, is that something that you picked up on in a previous coaching spot? And, um, or, and is that for everybody, or if it's left up to each assistant if he wants to do that with his players? Can he give me that one again? Yeah, the, uh, there were exams the players take yeah. before a game get ready for a Sure, moment. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Um, every, every position coach uh, and, and myself as the head coach, we, we test these guys all the time. You know, it's important. It's a, it, it, the old axiom to me is it's not what you know as a coach. It's what your players know. That's, that's how your players function. So if you just stand up there as a coach and, and – do all the talking and don't let your players talk or things like that, then then you never really know what your players know and what you need to correct. And maybe they see something a little bit differently. Maybe you'll learn something from your player. And um, so we, we try to give them tests. We give them verbal tests. We give them paper tests. Uh, that's something that, that wherever I've been, whether it was George O'Leary at Georgia Tech, Ralph Region at Maryland, or obviously Coach Belichick in New England, we, we gave them tests. and. Uh, Giving a test to Tom Brady was a pretty interesting thing because you, those tests were very, very difficult. But he, he usually aced them. I, I couldn't believe it. But, but, uh, but those are things that we've done and in, uh, in the past, and we'll continue to do here at Penn State. We think, it's, we think it helps the players. 
Okay, Brian, at this point, we'll take questions here in the media room. I see you please raise your hand and bring the microphone to you. Yeah, Bill, uh, what has it been like the last few weeks to have some calm around this program? You've won four straight games. Nobody's left the team for a few weeks. There's a lot of good things. What has the calm been like, and how have you guys handled that? I'll tell you guys, to me, it's, um, it's um, since training camp began, uh, spring practice, yeah, there's been some things that have happened, no question about it. But what's, what's impressed me about this team and this coaching staff through six games in training camp and spring practice, so we've got to continue this, but is the poise, is the ability to focus, is the, the ability to, to understand the task at hand and don't worry about all the things that you can't control. And, uh, you know, whether it's an individual player or a position or a unit or the coaching staff, I, I, I think we're, we, we've got a bunch of guys there that, that understand, look, there's certain things that we can control. We can control how we practice. We can control how we study, how we prepare, how we, how we go to class, how we act off the field, how we act on the field. But there's other things we can't. So let's just do the things that we can control and try to get better at those. And, and so far, that's been okay. And so that's what we need to continue to do. Curtis Dukes had some, some comments to his local media the other day about not getting enough carries. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Any possible disciplinary action or anything coming from that? Uh, it's a free country. <laughs> I mean, no, you know, Curtis, uh, he's working hard and uh, he's a member of the football team and just continue to work hard. And that's all I have to say about that. I know you can't talk about specific recruits, but a lot of your coaches went out this weekend recruiting. Did they get kind of positive reviews and more receptive because you guys are doing so well? Well, I will tell you that really from day one, whether it was uh, winter recruiting when I was when I was hired, or spring recruiting after uh, spring practice, or uh, this fall recruiting period, the, re the reception uh, for our coaches has been really, really good, really positive. And, uh, and I think that says a lot about our staff. We've got a bunch of veteran guys that have good connections in the places that they've recruited and or they're recruiting now and that they've recruited in the past. And uh, the reception's been good. This is, you know, in my opinion, this is a, a very special place with a, with a great tradition of, of football and academics and, and people have a lot of respect for it. And, and they understand our message and, and the direction with which, which we're going. So whether it was this, this week or you know, six months ago, I think the reception's been very positive. Um, Iowa running back Mark.